in a world dominated by Leviathan class towers. Power hungry monsters. There exists a new breed of power. Engineered for efficiency, for elegance. A silent sentiment of computing, so small that it defies reality itself. So I bought another silly computer thing. My therapist says it's a coping mechanism. Alrighty then, let's open her up. It's either gonna be a piece of life-changing tech or another paperweight I'm emotionally attached to for a few weeks. First thing we get is an absurdly long taking the lid off experience. Oh, and the mini PC itself. It's so small, like oh my god, look at oh, look at that thing. Look at all that IO. We got uh, some documents, but who cares about those? We got uh, a power cable, but it's an EU type. And at the time of writing, they don't make UK plugs, um, at least on the AliExpress store, which I ordered it from. So I had to order an, an adapter. I did tell customer service about this though, and they were very lovely about it. To the point my friends were saying, like, why are you flirting with customer service? And I was like, no, I'm not. Me. I'm not flirting with customer service. Nah. Nah, that's not me. And lastly, a Thickums HDMI cable. To be fair, I did actually need one of them for my capture card. So far, so good. Let's actually plug her in. So while this little box of wonders warms up, let's talk about the specs and I.O. On this little tiny PC, there's four USB uh, A type 3s. Two on the front, two on the back, two HDMI's, no display port, which kind of sucks, but two HDMI's is still pretty good. You know, dual display, Ethernet port, that's good. A headphone jack, it's beating Apple. Uh, and a barrel jack type plug, kind of sucky, it's not USB-C, but it's fine. The plug is nice and it's, it's very firm when you shove it in there, and yeah, that's, that's pretty solid. Spec-wise, the lo this lunchbox is showing off an Intel N100, a very low-powered uh, chip from the Alder Lake series. Four cores, four threads, so no hyper-thread in here, at 3.4 gigahertz. It beats my MacBook. And Intel UHD graphics at about 750 megahertz. That's that's peak. All of this from six watts. That's really impressive, in my opinion, at the very least. Which is correct. You should believe me. My model also came with uh, eight gigs of DDR4, only at single channel at 3,200 mega things per second. So the bare minimum of an okay PC nowadays. It, it, it'll do you, it'll do your stuff. Though ideally I would have preferred AMD on this machine for the better graphics, but I'll take Intel when it's this low powered and it's 90 quid. <laughs> take five. Now this thing is all warmed up, let's look at how small it is, and wow. It's not like size matters, but that's quite small. And let's actually stick the humble N100 to the test. First test will be on Heaven's Benchmark, and if you look at the score here, it gets 380. And comparing that to the Steam Deck, that's not the best score. The Steam Deck gets 1247. This gets 380. It's like a quarter, a third of the performance, somewhere between that. But then when you take into consideration that this was like a quarter to the third of the price of the base model Steam Deck, that's good price. No, that's good price to performance. And it's like a, a tenth of my uh, 2070 PC, which is still kind of alright. But let's, let's move on to the games. Let's really put this thing to the test. I want to get my torture fixed today. Games then, let's look at the games, and we'll start with the worst performing games, so then we can finish on a good note. 
To begin with, I tested out Dragon Ball Fighter Z at all those settings, 720p. This one, I expected to play really good, but it didn't. Like, it didn't play too good at all. This hurts to play. It's like one of those games which needs to play at 60fps to play at full speed, but sadly, it's just a no-go for this game. I hate to say. Next up on my list was Halo Reach, also all low at 720p. It didn't run too bad. It ran out at about 30fps, which I would class as playable if it weren't for this bug I was getting. It it kind of fluctuated a bit between the FPS, but there was some crazy input lag. Like, I'd turn, like, imagine I'm turning my hand here now, and then my whole body would just... You know, it didn't it didn't play too good at all. It was, yeah, it was unplayable. Halo Combat Evolved, though. All out, 720p with FSR balance, because for some reason, Combat Evolved needs FSR, but Halo Reach doesn't. This ran beautifully. This little freaking thing woke up and chose violence, pretty much 60 the whole time. Blasted through the first mission, hella good. Just glad I didn't have to see the horrors of the later levels. Ugh. Solid, but expected 10 out of 10 gameplay. Like, duh, this freaking game's old enough to drink in the United States. Skyrim, that was my next test. It, it ran out at 30fps, all low, 720p, which still is not amazing at all. But then again, it's, it's Skyrim. Skyrim plays great at 30fps. Once you start fighting some random guys or doing some stupid crap, the frame rate doesn't even matter. It's, it's just Skyrim on a little tiny box, smaller than a GameCube. Portal 2. This also ran beautifully at 720p. I didn't want to give any spoilers to the, the main story, so I played uh, this random community campaign. Like, I literally clicked random. But this kind of looks like one of the more fleshed out ones. So, uh, sorry about the spoilers. But yeah, this ran beautifully. I think it was like at medium settings. Um, yeah. I, I had fun with that. Emulation. I tested out... Um, only a few consoles, just so I could get a general gist, because if you can play those higher end consoles, then it's easily going to handle all the lower end stuff, like here. So first I tested out PS2 Need for Speed Carbon at 2x resolution. And okay, sure, Need for Speed Carbon is like one of the most demanding PS2 games there is, but I expected this to play a bit better, but I was really not impressed at all. There was lots of slowdown, but then again, this was at 720p, so I wanted to try my look at the native resolution, as you can see here now. But even then, at 1x resolution, it doesn't play at full speed at all. And for racing games, that's like really important. So I wouldn't class this as playable, but if you're trying to play like a lighter game, I think it would run, uh, run perfectly fine. I might include at the end credits of me playing a lighter game, but I've not recorded any and I can't be asked because I've been very busy. GameCube Need for Speed Carbon at 2x resolution. Same goes for this on the GameCube. It's still like a really demanding game for that console. It doesn't play well at 2x, but it played a lot better than PS2 at 2x and even 1x. So when I gave it at a chance at 1x resolution, it plays at full speed which is amazing. I'm more used to the PSP Need for Speed games, like Most Wanted, so the weird slowdown drift mechanic I didn't quite get too much, but it ran the game. That's peak. Freaking awesome little thing. And obviously if you're playing a lighter title, I think you can bump the resolution up just fine. So yeah, this thing obviously isn't a gaming PC, like at all. Or an actual GameCube or PS2 for that matter. But the fact that it can handle most of these older titles at at least native resolution on some of the consoles is amazing. For 90 quid, no less. I wouldn't say though to drop the money just for gaming. You'd be better off holding off a lot longer to save up for something with at least like a Ryzen 5 CPU unit with integrated AMD graphics. But if you need a little office PC and you just want to play some of these older titles on the side, then hell yeah! Get off the video now! Freaking buy this thing!
<laughs> Buy it now. Buy it now, man. Buy this bloody PC now. So, who is this actually for? And I'd say it's for those kind of people who are on an extremely tight budget, like yours truly, and in need of a good-ish PC. For like, I don't know, Excel spreadsheets, college work, writing, but you need to compromise ma majorly on space. And yeah, it's perfect for that. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of this product. It's a tiny little PC. Like, why wouldn't it be? And it plays Halo for 90 quid. What more could you want from that price? My opinion, however, on this thing, it's an amazing PC at this price. But GMK Tech, if you're watching this, which I did tell your customer service to look out for, aim for dual channel RAM next time. Even if it's at gate 8 gigabytes, do like 2-4 DIMM sl uh, slots. 2-4 gigabyte RAM sticks, yeah? That'll make it perform at least a little bit better. And AMD machines at this price, that is what you should be aiming for. Like maybe a modern Ryzen 3, would, it would have slightly better graphics than whatever Intel's pumping out. It just needs that little extra boost and I'd think it'd be perfect and some more colour options. But other than that, I, I really like this thing and I think it's going to stay on my desk for now until I get a new one. It's small, it's efficient and it's cheap. 9 out of freaking 10. Just go for AMD next time, GMK Tech, and I think you'll have yourself a happy customer.